welcome everybody to Advocates for Justice Paralegal School. We provide the tools, you guys do the work. This is my buddy, Portia, and uh, this show is helping feed her. She, she, eats, she likes to eat a lot of steak. <laughs> okay, sorry. Now, this is Portia. She's a part of our family. We're training her. And she likes to see herself on TV. So from time to time, we might have her come in and, and do and do a segment and show for us. Is that okay with you, Portia? Hmm? Okay. What do you think? You think you like, you know, what, do you, what do you think? You ready to get down? Okay. She's telling me to get to work. Welcome to Advocates for Justice Paralegal School. We provide the tools, you guys do the work. I'm Coach Neighbors, and today I'm going to explain to you how to stay the claim. But I'm going to explain to you my quick version. Yeah, I got people calling me all the time wanting a quick version for this and a quick version. <laughs> no, I have a quick version. I don't have any other quick version. This is my only quick version. So the reason that they make us do this is supposed to be to make things simpler and more clear about who you're saying did what and when. And basically, I'm going to go over how to do it. I'm going to show you what it looks like laid out. And basically, what we're going to do, you're going to go in and number all of the sentences in, in the document, break them down into sentences, and give each sentence a number. And it works out great if you can group the numbers together so that the first 10 numbers address the wrongful foreclosure and the next group of numbers address the breach of contract. And the next, now you don't have to do it that way, but it's a lot easier as long as you put a number next to uh, the count so you're clear about what you're saying there did. Now, there are a few other things that you guys have to know when you're making a lawsuit, and you need to Google that so that you can learn what they are. Now, one of them I can remember off the top of my head is you have to have a statement about in uh, deliberate indifference which has something to do, if I remember correctly, about, uh, about the defendant's state of mind, that their state of mind was to screw you over. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. So check that out. Google that and find out the things that you have to have in, in your lawsuit because there are some little funny things like that that you have to have or they're going to throw it out for failure to state a claim. Remember, they're the ones that made this system and they didn't make it easy for us to come in and get done what we need to do. Now, what I'm going to share with you guys is the structure of stating the claim and the layout, how it looks on paper. And so we're going to just um, get right into it. We're going to start out with factual allegations because that's, um, you have to have those, oh, those are the, what you have to have numbered out into sentences. And then you have to connect those sentences to the counts. And so we're going to show you what that looks like on the screen. So we're going to start with factual allegations. And you can see here we got them numbered. Each sentence is numbered. So each of these sentences are numbered. And it works out best if the first three were the wrongful foreclosure. Or the first 27. We'll say the first 27 were wrongful foreclosure. So this is what you would write. Count one, wrongful foreclosure. Uh, put a number right there. The plaintiff incorporates by reference the facts alleged in paragraphs 1 through 27. So you're saying 1 through 27 was the wrongful foreclosure stuff. Okay, and here count, count 2 is breach of contract. And the plaintiff is incorporating by reference the other facts alleged in paragraph 10 through 26 uh, were what breach of contract. So that's how you number that. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to do, and it makes things not more clear. Now, if you have several defendants, and some of them are responsible for some stuff, some are responsible for other stuff, and you don't think they conspire together, <laughs> yeah, that's how I used it, because they are conspired together, so they're all responsible for everything. But it's up to you how you want to do it. If you break it down and you have more than one defendant and you want to put exactly what that defendant is responsible, well, when you get done doing this, I would make another little section. And actually, I would name the defendants on the top in order. Defendant one is so-and-so. Defendant two is so-and-so. Defendant three is so-and-so. And then down here, you can make your reference defendant one, uh, one through 27. Defendant two, uh, 20, 10 through 26. 
and just go down the road like that. That's what they want. They want to be able because they're they're dumb and they can't figure <laughs> they can't figure it out. So we have to spell it out for them. So that's how they wanted to do it, and we're gonna start doing it that way. Why have to have to fight? We we can take we can take care of this little problem. <laughs> so that's all I got today, guys. Thank you for the privilege of sharing your time, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh wait, don't forget. Uh, make sure that you guys uh, click on those ads so I can get paid to feed my puppy. My puppy likes steak. <laughs> and ring the bell, subscribe, and share my stuff so other people can see uh, the fire that we're bringing to the table. Thanks, guys.